ChatGPT snuck out a new content creation feature last week that barely anybody in the marketing world seems to have noticed. But I've been playing with it and I think it gives marketers that use it a huge advantage, particularly small marketing teams, essentially giving them a virtual content department. In fact, I've been using this personally to write and publish blogs and get them ranked in less than a day. But, and it's a big but, this thing could get you into a whole lot of trouble unless you add to show you how this thing works, we're gonna write a blog post together live. Now I've got it open here and using the new model ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. Now I've got my brief and I've also got a document which I've uploaded. We're gonna come back to this in a minute because the brief is quite important. Now you're probably used to writing articles in ChatGPT. You just ask ChatGPT to write an article and it writes an article. Now in this prompt, I've asked it for help planning and then writing an article. So it's given me the plan here, which looks pretty good. So I'm gonna say, go ahead and write the article, please. Now notice what happens, we've got this separate canvas section here with the article. We've got our chat window on the left hand side so we can talk to ChatGPT here, but the content that is produced is over on the right hand side. Big deal, Tim, this is just like Claude Artifacts, so what? Well, there's a few things that you can do with this. Firstly, you can edit live. But you can also highlight sections and ask it follow up questions or ask it to elaborate. So you see how rather than rewriting the entire article, it just rewrites the section that it needs to, meaning if you'd made any edits in the rest of the article, they'd be untouched. You can also do things like start new thoughts and get it to finish them. You can have it rewrite paragraphs. You can even have it suggest improvements to its own work. This little button at the bottom, suggest edits. It then sweeps through as if it's in Google Docs and adds little comments and suggestions on how to improve each section. Now these aren't always good, but sometimes they're kind of useful. You can change the length of the article, either making it much longer or much shorter. And if you don't like what it's done, you can just go back. You can change the reading level, which might be great if you're producing something that maybe you want to take to your bosses to get approval on, where you might want to reduce the reading level. Well, let's say you're writing for a more technical audience, you might want to increase the reading level. You can also add emojis and add something called final polish. Of course, those are the standard features, but then it's up to you to add your creativity. For example, let's say I wanted to add more info about the business and include some internal links, and I'm just gonna paste that sitemap in. And there we go, we've got our internal links. Now these little features, in my opinion, all compound in this latest version to have a profound impact on content generation. The quality of the content that it's possible to produce through this is really good. And this isn't even the latest OpenAI model, right? This is 4.0 with Canvas. There's also O1 Preview, which is the latest model. So they haven't even released that model, which is capable of multi-step reasoning with this new Canvas. So Tim, can I plug this thing into my Shopify dropshipping CBD plushies website and produce 400 blogs a second? Whoa, whoa, whoa. When looking at something like this, it's very tempting to think about the massive volume of content that you could produce, but actually we need to keep in mind the basics of SEO and content marketing. In particular, there are four areas that you need to be thinking about to avoid this blowing back in your face or even your content just dying and never really doing anything. The first consideration is the brief that you give this model. If you give it a bland brief, it will give you bland output. It doesn't matter whether that article is generated in line or in a fancy canvas that you can edit. If you give it a generic brief, it's gonna produce generic output. Remember that when Google could see the tidal wave of AI content that was about to hit its search results, it added an extra E to EEAT for experience. Google wants to reward content that shares first-hand experience of the topics it's talking about. ChatGPT will never have that experience, so you need to add it. You need to add your stories, your insights, your unique perspectives. So let's take a look at this brief. I haven't just asked it to produce a generic blog. I've given it specific angles to focus on based on our experience and our knowledge of the industry. 
I've given it some subtopics that I want it to cover and some opinions on those subtopics so it's not just producing something generic. The article that it has produced is completely different to what it would have produced if I'd have just said write me a blog post about this and left it there. I've also given it specific information about the business, in this case uploading the Brand Accelerator report. And by the way, the Brand Accelerator report is a huge piece of work that the team here at Exposure Ninja did about this business, breaking down all types of things like customer personas, customer research, buying behavior, pain points, even the psychographic profile of the potential customers. It details the funnels that we can use, it covers calls to action, it gives brand story, tone of voice guidelines. So I uploaded this entire brand accelerator report to ChatGPT as part of the prompt, which means the output that I get is much more tailored to the business than if I just asked ChatGPT to write an article without any of that additional context. But I also told ChatGPT what the goal of this blog post was as well, so that it could write with that goal in mind. It's pointless just writing and publishing content, even if it gets ranking, if you don't get any conversions from it. The next piece of crucial input is exactly what you're writing about. Yes, of course, this means that you can produce blog posts, some cases, in a matter of minutes rather than hours. But the next question is, so what are you going to write about and how does that tie into your goals? So prior to doing this, I worked with the content marketing team in Exposure Ninja to say, okay, what are the different topics that we need to talk about? They helped me break these into topic clusters so I could see the map of all of the different types of content that we needed to produce about each different topic cluster and then work out which individual articles contributed to those clusters. That means I'm producing these articles with a goal in mind. There's a plan to all of this. It's not just a spray and pray, let's see how many articles we can publish. The third area that you need to have input on is what's the conversion goal? How are you going to turn a visitor to this post into a customer? This is going to depend on who the target audience is, and it's gonna depend on where they're at in their buyer journey. So is this really top of funnel content, in which case we might be trying to sign them up for some sort of mailing list, or we might be able to give them a download? Or is this a bottom of funnel piece of content where we might be trying to turn someone into a consultation booking or book an inquiry or get a free quote? The fourth area that you need to have input on is AI overviews optimization. With AI overviews being visible in more and more of Google's searches, it's really important that your content actually gets visibility in those AI overviews. These AI overviews are taking up more and more of the search results page. So if you're getting AI overviews for your target searches, you want to make sure that you're being seen in those AI overviews. We have an entire video on exactly how to do this, so I'm not gonna cover it now, but you can click on the link in the description to watch that one. I think this latest innovation from OpenAI is really exciting and changes the game with content. Not because it replaces human marketers, but because it gives them so much more leverage. In fact, we've got a client that we're working with who is really into AI. They produce tons and tons of blogs using AI. And we help them work out which topics to write about. So we suggest some, they suggest some, we collaborate and there's feedback back and forth. We then optimize those blog posts to make sure they reflect the personal experience of the business. And loads of these blogs are doing really well because they're good quality content, but with that personal experience, with the expertise of that business shining through. Of course, there is always a risk to this type of strategy. If Google takes a dislike to AI content in the future, or is able to figure out which content has been produced by AI, then there is a risk that these pieces could see a ranking drop. So we also work with this client on some really high quality, uniquely produced pieces as well. I would love to tell you more about this client than this specific use case, but this is going so well for us, they made us promise that we wouldn't tell you. So <laughs> there you go. What does this mean for the future? Well, I think it's lowered the bar to content creation significantly. The sort of volume output that even a small marketing team can have now with tools like this is the sort of output that you would have needed a team of dozens of people to produce even just a few years ago. Some businesses won't be able to use these tools yet because their legal departments will just say flat no. And we get that. Some businesses won't use this stuff because they don't know it exists or they feel scared of AI. We get that too. But if you're into this stuff, if you want to play with it and you want to exploit that first mover advantage, this is a really interesting time in marketing. And if you're watching this thinking, wow, this has just blown my mind with the amount of content that we could be producing on our website, but 
We need someone to help us refine our strategy, work out what topics we need to be posting on, work out how this all turns into leads and sales, then great news. The team at Exposure Ninja does exactly this with our clients. We can help point you in the right direction. We can help you get set up and make sure the content that you're producing, whether you're using AI or an internal team or our team, is of the highest quality. To get started, just go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review to request your free website and marketing review. Not everyone is eligible, but if you are, then we'll record you a 15 to 20 minute video, which will show you exactly how to use strategies like this to get more traction, traffic and conversions online. That's ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. Hope you found this video useful. Until next time, see you soon.